Welcome pen friends, this is Tom with Goldspot Pens. I'm here in Nuremberg, Germany, and I am here at the Kaweco factory store, and I'm joined by... Uh, Michael Kutbelet. I'm the CEO of Kaweco and a re-founder of the Kaweco brand. And uh, welcome Tom and uh, Goldspot here in Nuremberg. Yes, thank you. It's been a, f a fun journey for us and I appreciate you opening your doors not only to the factory store that we've seen here but also to your production facility and to the offices and uh, your own personal pen collection of which we saw it grew today quite substantially. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got the right moment. I was uh, working on that uh, moment for several years. One of the biggest collectors in Germany, yeah, he decided to sell me his collection. So. For this moment, I think the Kaweco Museum has a, uh, the biggest Kaweco collection and uh, one day we will have a nice museum to show everything. What really uh, informs, I mean we see the Kaweco brand as it was uh, brought back into the modern era after the 1980s when it had become bankrupt that um, when you, had you and your father had taken it and, and brought it into uh, the 21st century that a lot of the designs were actually inspired by the older models. Yes, that's true, but it was not um, from the beginning in our mind. Uh, the first step was the uh, Kaweco Sport Pen because it is, is a pocket fountain pen and during that time nobody made a pocket fountain pen. And this is why we, we start with that, from that standpoint. Only later when the shop owners came and said, hey, uh, Michael, we, we cannot make enough uh, profit on the cheap uh, classic sport pens. Um, it costs too less. You have to think about additional pens. Um, by that, we came to that point that we need not a modern design, so that we need some classic historical pen design and for that reason this kind of collection or museum pieces is a great help because you can see really the development of the pens, especially in the sport, the special and the dyer. Absolutely. And we actually saw a few of the older, uh, the original sport pens with piston fill, uh, clear, uh, clear ink window that's in there. Um, that the shape though is a much much similar and the design as far as the the size of it the fact that the cap is larger so that when you post the cap on the back it becomes a full-sized type of pen a lot of those characteristics had transferred forward into the new modern models um, but uh, but you were saying you would like to at some point also revisit the idea of it being a, a piston fill uh, fountain pen yes of course for, for a German fountain pen maker, I think a piston fountain pen is a must. Mm -hmm. It was founded and created in, in, in Germany, you know, from Pelican, mm -hmm. um, uh, but it is a part of the fountain pen industry uh, to have a piston filler. So one day, I'm absolutely sure, and we are working on it, I can tell that, but I don't know when it will be really ready and which model we start with, mm -hmm. but piston filler is my dream. Absolutely. So um, besides, of course, purchasing large sums of, of collectible pens, what other, what other things that um, you do during the day that, uh, that you enjoy doing here at, uh, at the, the factory and the warehouse here? The most of the thing why I have such a lot of fun with Kaweco is that I, or that we can see that we can inspire people uh, to love the writing culture. Um, to start again with fountain pens, using, uh, working or having a good handwriting. So, and the feedback from the market or from consumers is so strong with mm -hmm. our brand. So it's really emotional. It's already nearly a friendship. Right. And we can feel that and the customer can feel that. And this is what drives us daily in, in, in with our products. And that's the reason also why the storefront was, was created here. Um, it connected to the production facility being that you want to have that immediate feedback to understand how customers respond to new finishes, new designs. You want to get the, have your finger on the pulse of 
the the writing community. Yes, yes. The, the, the really funniest thing, because sometimes I'm here in the store because I make a new decoration or something, and when a customer come in and when they buy something and go out, then I ask them, how you feel? Mm -hmm. What was your first impression? And the interesting thing is that most of the people say, oh, I feel already immediately at home. Mm -hmm. It was very warm, a warm welcome alone from the, uh, from the uh, furniture and how the store is, is, is decorated. So this interesting feedback, together with the service we do, you can try all the nips. The people feel very well and everybody said, oh, we come back for sure. <laughs> Do you get a lot of visitors internationally too who come to visit? Yes, internationally we have visitors because uh, some uh, are here on the fairground. We have a big fairground, it's number five or number six in Europe. Okay. So a toy show, for example, is the biggest in the world here mm -hmm. in Nuremberg in, in January. And uh, from that point, uh, we have some visitors also internationally. Yes, and then you're true. also having a pen show tomorrow as well. Yes, there's a, a collector pen show in, in Nuremberg. This is now the 12th uh, time. Mm -hmm. It's not the biggest show from Germany. The biggest is in Cologne, organized by Stefan. You met him just yes. some minutes ago. So, but we wanted to have something uh, uh, in this house. So, and uh, we have regularly 30, 40, 50 exhibitors and around 100, 150 visitors over there. Mm. So, it's, you know, we are sharing the same spirit. That's the interesting point. Yeah, it's, just, it's spreading the enthusiasm for writing and the, yes. the enthusiasm over yes. pens. Yes. What was like the last special day that you had as, a, as the Koweko uh, team? Like, so I know it's a very small, close-knit um, team that you have, of which also your, your son and daughter-in-law are also involved, but yeah. what, would, what would you say was your last special day that you had with the whole, the whole office? Ah, with the whole office. So this is, you know, when we get a country where we never expect to sell to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just read in, in my emails, we got Mauritius. So, Mauritius. <laughs> so, so this is good to go there for holidays. Nice, so nice. Maybe we can, now we sell pens over there. It's like, it? oh, well, we need to go in and, yes. you know, somebody's got to take a trip over there. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we have always, you know, we, 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 are, we are happy about that. Yeah, all of us, yeah, to have a new country and, uh, or a new island where we can supply and maybe one day we are well known over there as well. All, That's over, good. all over the world. Yeah, would That's be, would be good. My yeah. dream is when I retire to have 80 countries. So at the moment we have 56, I think, or 57. That way you could have a, an easy uh, explanation as to why you're traveling to all those countries yes. <laughs> to take a trip or so. Yes. <laughs> That's why we've always said you could come back to the United States Please. and like you did the interview with us before, you could come and we'll, we'll treat you and we'll go to New York City, we'll go hang out a little bit yeah. over there. I love New York City, I have to say, because New York City has the vibes, you know, when you go there, mm -hmm. that everything is possible. It's, it's, it has like an electric feel. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why it happens to me so strongly. Yeah. yeah. But always when I have time in New York, I try to go in an old uh, higher rise building mm -hmm. and check what kind of factories are in the 20th or 25th floor because sometimes there are some really uh, um, metalworking company or leather company, they're mm -hmm. doing something. And I would like to explore them all. Yes. <laughs> There's, a lot, there's definitely a lot of companies that are looking to be a big player or part of the bigger stage. That's where they go to, yeah. as, as New York is that hub. How do you usually enjoy just like writing with your pens? So usually a uh, journal or, or do you use them for, for work purposes, taking notes, things like that? Now with, the, with the old Kaweco stuff, I, I try only sometimes, once in a while, a pen. But then only for pleasure and how is the feeling? So my normal, my normal work I do with a sport fountain pen or with a pencil. Okay. And uh, I use it really uh, daily because when I write a letter to someone, my secretary will type it <laughs> and I write it by hand. Oh, nice. <laughs> before, and then I give it to her and uh, she writes it. So I write a lot by, really by hand and then with fountain pen. 
Is it common, um, like people around this area or even other places in Germany, do you find a lot of people writing with Kaweco pens? It's growing. It's growing. Uh, I have to say, our, um, our fans are really go through different ages mm -hmm. and uh, uh, how I say, different uh, working skills have nothing to do with only students or, or, or school boys and girls or, or employees. No, it goes really through all uh, the directions, lawyer, architects, designers, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And it's not only because in, in not only in Nuremberg, so it's when the people like our stuff, then they show up. Mm -hmm. So this is what we, we found. Of course, we like to expand in Nuremberg the awareness with Kaweco, that's for sure. And uh, because it's more easy here directly yeah. when Absolutely. we are here. Yeah. And is it do you when you see somebody riding with it, let's say on you know bus or like on a park bench or something, do you like go over and you're like, hey, I make that pen, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it it happened that the people see on my glass Kaweco pen oh, or right, on my they, hat, right? Then they come. You are from Kaweco. I'm using your pen. Nice, <laughs> so, nice. so that's that's happened. <laughs> Even yeah. sometimes on the airport. <laughs> Well, I still, ha I actually still, other than the people within, let's say, for example, I walk into, and you, you know, you know me, but um, there's some people mm -hmm. I walk into with, uh, you know, in pen circumstances, like either at a show or at like one of the manufacturers, they will see me and they'll know my yeah. face, but I haven't yet to be stopped by somebody just out of the plain blue and be like, I know you from... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but that's, that's, that's happened already. So there's a lot of things that, you know, you, yes. you go out there to try to get the, the brand awareness. Yes, and, and also I think very important in our case is the, the service we do. Mm -hmm. Because when the people uh, come back and even with a very old piece, we try to help them. Oh, we don't, nice. we, we, we just say not, okay, no, we don't have any parts, forget it. This pen is 60 year old, throw it away, you know. We don't do that. So we have some connection with a collector, he makes repairment. So mm -hmm. we, we, we connect these people together. Or if it is possible and I have time, I try to, to, to help them with a nip or something like that. Because um, uh, I think when some people have a friendship to our brand, then, and he is helped, he will right. buy another pen, you know, a new yeah. one for his for his own or he buy one to give it away as a gift. Especially they see the amount of attention and, and the amount of sacrifice that you're making to, I mean, you already made the sale, you know, it, it, yeah. if they come back and they say, oh, I broke it, yeah. you know, most, most days now, like you, you drop an iPhone, you break the screen, you bring it back to Apple the next yeah. day and said, oh, well, do you have the protection plan? Nope. Oh, well, I guess you're yeah. buying a new iPhone, yes. you know, like, but in this case, like you're trying to go above and beyond yes. to, to help. And, and, yes. that's, and that sort of thing, you know, really makes that connection for a life. Yes, that's, that's, that's just the, one of, of our key points because we are a small company yeah, with a very special product. Also, the value is not very high. You know, you know our, most of our products is between 20 and 150 US dollar. So, but uh, I think if somebody decides to buy a pen for 60, 80 dollars, he has to have some respect about this product. He expects some quality for that level mm -hmm. and some lifetime. And of course, something can be happened in the production, something can be happened with the customer. He drop it, he make this or that. Absolutely. Of course, and then we try to help that he, this product keep going, uh, go on running. Right. Yeah. I have a newfound respect for the, uh, the Lilliput Fire Blue after seeing <laughs> one get torched today. So. <laughs> uh, I have to see if the wood still burns. So we have maybe to, to put some water on, otherwise the factory burns. <laughs> oh, but it's, it's that little handmade toucher yeah. that really makes a huge difference. Makes, makes, makes really a big yeah. difference. And um, the, the funny thing was uh, it, it, uh, how, I, how I get to know, or how I get to, to inspire by to do that. It was a customer, he wanted to have some blue steel, uh, uh, there's some old furnish like that. So, and he said, why you don't have it? You are the right people for, or right customer or a right supplier for that kind of stuff. So 
I said, I, I never heard about it, but I will learn it, I will do it, I will make something. I'll, so figure, I'll figure something out. Yeah. Yes, and then I was in my cellar, you know, in my home, <laughs> and I was uh, burning and burning and burning, you know, a lot of products, and uh, also the holders, and then I put it in water and in oil, and I put some liquid around, I had a lot of um, tests. Yeah. And the, on the end, with a special gas and with some training, I got the result I, ex I expected. Mm -hmm. But my customer said, this is not what I want. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> I was li really a little bit frustrated, but I think now he's buying also that <laughs> after some years. <laughs> I was like, well, this is one I asked for, but hey, this is still a nice item. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say is like the soul of a Kaweco pen? The soul of the Kaweco pen, in general, I would say, is the fountain pen. It's, it's the soul of the Kaweco company. It's a combination of the function, of the combination, the nib, the ink, uh, if it is easy to handle. So, but what I always feel, the fountain pen is for Kaweco, the soul. Mm -hmm. People are always wonder why we sell much more fountain pen than pole pens because right. there are many companies sell a lot of pole pens you know right, and right. then fountain pens is a corner of it right and at Kaweco is exactly like in the historical it is fountain pen and it is pencils and then the other comes yes that is very that is very interesting because we never pushed it in that, in that direction right it was we, we, we didn't expect that <clears throat> It was the result on the end, you know, we are selling much more fountain pens and pencils and then ball pen, rollerball, so. And that's what I kind of felt like too, is there was a transition, especially in the, <coughs> I would say late 2000s and the early 2010s where um, ball points and rollerballs were really kind of your primary drivers in sales mm -hmm. because I think that they were mostly given as gifts at, mm -hmm. for, for retirement, for uh, graduation, yeah. uh, Father's Day, that, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But then as people started to adopt writing by hand as a pleasurable thing, as something that they use to be productive as opposed mm -hmm. to all of the digital gadgets that have mm -hmm. overrun and overtaken mm -hmm. everything, that people have said, oh, well, I, you know, they visited the fountain pen and said, you know what, this writes better than anything else I've written with before. I think what is the interesting point on the fountain pen, with a fountain pen you need really a concentration. Because the first thing is you take it, you do have to look on the nib and how you put the nib on the paper. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't put it but in the right, right position, way, yeah. then it doesn't write well. Right. So all, all right, totally not. Mm -hmm. So a ball pen and a roller ball you can place any time on the paper. Right. But uh, but because it is so fast running, your 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 writing is also very unconcentrated and is yeah going in any direction. But mm -hmm. with the fountain pen, because this concentration, you are working really in very very beautiful line if you're trained a little bit. Right, so you have to be more deliberate yes. uh, in not only your physical capacity, your hand-eye yeah. coordination, but mentally. Then that creates that deliberate sense of. I have to sort my thoughts out and I have yeah. to put them on paper. Yeah, exactly. So it's a, I, I personally like the concentration. Yeah, this is how I feel. And I spoke with several people which never used the fountain pen and started with ours because it's, it's a price is with the sport, with the classic. Absolutely. It's only 20 bucks, you know, and then for them it's easy to go and test it one time. Yep. So in, they, they fall in love with that writing. So yeah. and then they say, hey, that's good. I will buy more or a better one. So and it's, it's it's a confirmation that they never had this feeling of very good writing, handwriting. Absolutely. And then once you do, and you also find that perfect ink that goes along, and then that paper <coughs> that complements everything together, yeah. then going back to cheap ballpoint pens and you know cheap paper pads and yeah. that is no longer you know a, a thought in your mind yes you need to go forward <laughs> yes then it's just a little memo and then throw it away <laughs> again yeah. that's it and you only keep them around if you need to make carbon copies or something that's about yeah. it so michael 
appreciate you taking us through the production facility and the the showroom here and also your offices to take a look at also your growing collection of yeah. uh, antique Koweko pens and other brands as well. Um, you know, it's, it's been great to come and visit you here in Germany and see these pens being made and shipped all over the world to yeah. pen fans worldwide. So uh, appreciate you taking the time with us. Yeah. And uh, we'll be seeing you soon, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you, Tom, for coming by and hope to see you soon. And I hope next time please bring a little bit more time also for a nice dinner. I will I have to yeah <laughs> to, to come time to enjoy Nuremberg a little yes. bit more but yes. uh, but yeah we had we had an action packed trip yes. so like normal business trips are yep absolutely okay so thank you bye thank you my friends take care